That's it. That works. How do you do it? Just talk in the book. Okay. <laughs> do, we, do we have, Megan, do we have the list to announce the girls? Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of our national anthem and please remain standing for the playing of the Bald Eagle alma mater. Make sure. Yep, give me this. Yep, we're ready to go. Okay. There you go. You stand behind me. You can stand that way and face that way. Okay. Face that way. All right. 
Good evening, alumni, students, family, and staff, and welcome to this year's homecoming coronation ceremony. My name is Megan Shields, and I am the president of student government. Let us meet our nominees. Madeline Single, escorted by Mitchell Taylor. Maddie is the daughter of Jeff and Laura Single of Clarence. She is a district qualifier in both track and cross country. She is a member of FBLA, Student Government, Spanish Club, National Honor Society, SAD, and the Senior Executive Committee. Now, please welcome Haley Giedrock, escorted by Jason Jones. Haley is the daughter of Walter and Audrey Giedrock of Howard. Haley is a member of SAD, National Honor Society, Leo Club, 4-H, and Student Government. Haley also represents the Lady Eagles in soccer, cross country, basketball, and softball. Please welcome Jesse Jenkins, escorted by Damian Vanderhoof. Jesse is the daughter of Jeffrey and Lori Jenkins of Julianne. Her activities include Mock Trial, Girl Scouts, Leo Club, National Honor Society, and several of BEA's musical ensembles. Jesse is a committee volunteer for Special Olympics, a statistician for boys basketball and the track programs, and she is a hair and makeup specialist for the drama club. Next, we have Emily Coleno, escorted by Levi Kramer. Emily is the daughter of Tammy and Nick Coleno of Mishannon. Emily is involved in the Spanish Club and the Drama Club. She hopes to attend Pittsburgh University, majoring in biology. Let's welcome Mackenzie Proctor, escorted by Jarrett Schreffler. Mackenzie is the daughter of Rodney and Jody Proctor of Julianne. She is a proud member of the Lady Eagles soccer team and softball team. She is also a member of FBLA, SAD, and the Senior Executive Committee. Next we have Kaylee Salvanish, escorted by Shane Coons. Kaylee is the daughter of Kathy and Jim Willett of Clarence. Kaylee has been a part of the sophomore and junior executive committees. She is a member of Leo Club and a Special Olympics volunteer. Kaylee is also a proud member of the Lady Eagles basketball team. Please welcome Rexine Shrum and her escort, Adam Morgan. Rexine is the daughter of Jeremy and May Rossman of Howard. Rexine is a member of Bookends, National Honor Society, and Spanish Club. She runs track in the spring and is a fall and winter cheerleader. Next, we have Marissa Tobias and her escort, Clint McCaslin. Marissa is the daughter of Jack and Minnie Tobias of Clarence. When she isn't busy working, she is, an act she is active in student government and senior executive committee. Marissa is also the third Macepin for the Lady Eagles softball team.
Now, please welcome Clarissa Woomer and her escort, Zachary Lucas. Clarissa is the daughter of Nancy and Nelson Woomer of Snowshoe. Clarissa participates in several of Bald Eagle's musical ensembles, Drama Club, National Honor Society, Student Government, Envirothon, Spanish Club, Bookends, and Powder Puff Football. Our last lovely young lady is Tyler Yarrison and her escort Dylan Bathurst. Tyler is the daughter of Terry and Tracy Yarrison of Howard. She is a member of Student Government and National Honor Society. She is also a member of the Lady Eagle volleyball and softball teams. Everyone, please welcome Miss Bald Eagle Area 2014-2015, Mackenzie Basala and her escort, Dylan Burns. Mackenzie and Dylan have been busy all summer attending parades and other events. Next week, she and Dylan will represent BEA at the Pennsylvania Flaming Foliage Festival in Renovo. We wish her the best of luck. At this time, please welcome back our 2013-2014 homecoming queen, Karen Warner, and her escort, Drew Miller. Karen is now a freshman at Penn State and is majoring in pre-med. Tonight, our second runner-up for homecoming 2014 is Rexine Shrum, escorted by Adam Morgan. Congratulations, Rexine. Our first runner-up is Tyler Yarrison, escorted by Dylan Bathurst. Congratulations, Tyler. Our homecoming queen, 2014, is... Kaylee Salvanish, escorted by Shane Coons. Let's give one last round of applause for all of our lovely nominees and their handsome escorts. And thank you to all the fans who braved the rain tonight to come out here and support us. All right. All right. We're good. Um, our photographer here is going to get a couple.
Board of Aurelia School District is pleased to welcome you today to Alumni Stadium. Good sportsmanship is one of the primary purposes of athletics. Our student athletes recognize that judgment calls by officials, coaches, and themselves are made in good faith and should be respected. Spectators can support their team by refraining from derogatory or
Well, here we go. Kickoff time on homecoming night. Unmute. He did. He's unmuted. I am. Hey, before I, are you welcome Chris? to welcome to rainy night homecoming 2014. <laughs> Steve Miller and Doug Dyke here with you at Alumni Stadium. How we sounded, Dylan? Everything good to go? All right, before we officially get started and try to be more professional this week, we apologize for the abrupt start tonight, but the boy wonder was part of homecoming tonight, and he's a little flustered, so. Tyrone gets the ball at the 31-yard <laughs> line. Let's get underway here. They go right. out of the eye. Under center for Tyrone. How does that is look, Dylan? OK. Hunter. We're going to have the same thing we have with Chestnut Ridge. Hunter and Hunter are the quarterbacks for Tyrone. Inside handoff, again, about four or five. Take the ball across the 35 to the, about the 36-yard line, second and five. Well, unfortunately, it looks like the rain has held the cr crowd down a little bit. Who was our homecoming queen? Kaylee Salvanish. Yes, Miss Salvanish was the, uh, was the homecoming queen. So that e we got the evening started on a good note. Maybe the defense can get us started on the football side. Out of the eye for Tyrone. Give it to the deep back. 35, 40, first down, 45, 50. One guy to beat. And a nice tackle on the play by Mitchell Struble, but not before the runner gets to the 25-yard line and not the opening series you want on defense now, for Bald Eagle tonight. Now, Tyrone, um, they have a new coach this year. I forget what his name is, but he's a younger gentleman. He coached under Coach Franco and then Coach Gutoff. I think you're going to see pretty much the same type of office, uh, offense, eye formation, not a lot of flash and dash. They're well, just going to five and zero. Why would you want to change anything? Well, that's just it. And the kids know the system, so why mess with it much? Counter. Twenty fifteen. Knocked down inside the 10 to about the seven yard line. That time, Doug, on, they went over the left side. They got 18 yards, first and goal for the uh, Golden Eagles. Well, that's twice now to the left. So they obviously, I think they've already found something they want to expose. That was just a simple I formation counter play. Um, they kicked out the end. Of course, Bald Eagles depleted by some injuries this week and some illnesses, which we can't mention specifically via HIPAA vote regulations, but so we're already down a couple starters and that doesn't help. Cohen against. gets the ball, he's gonna be stopped short of the five yard line, nice gang tackle. They went right side that time, only gained two yards, Doug. Yeah, so I think, if I had to guess, Steve, they're probably gonna come back to the left here. Morgan gets credit for the tackle, 10-23 left to go first quarter. First drive of the night for Tyrone. I'm gonna put a shout out to our folks in Milesburg, the Spence clan. If you can text me with an update on how we're sounding and how the picture looks, we'd appreciate it. Go ahead, Steve. Three to the right, one back in the backfield. Hand off to the back, they go right side again and oh. stopped again before they get to the five yard line. Pretty much no gain that time. Yes, is there a flag? I hear a whistle. Maybe not, just Morgan right, with so another third tackle. Down. Third and goal now for Tyrone. Ball still at about the five and a half yard line. So they surprised this big, me. This, there. Is big, this is a big this is a big down for the defense. This could be a confidence builder for them if they're able to hold here. But I'm guessing this is four down territory for Tyrone. I would think so. You know, the kids need something good to happen. They've had a rough two weeks, especially on offense. A lot of uh, negativity. Out of the for Tyrone now with trips to the left. Fake handoff. He's going to roll to his right. Looks, steps, throws. Incomplete pass. Oh, nice. Fourth defense. down. Good defense that time. They bottled that play up. There was really no room for him to go with that ball. And watching on the camera, I can't tell you who had the pressure. So I just know there was good pressure on the quarterback, and the coverage wasn't bad. Now, of course, they rolled to the right, so they took half the field away from themselves, I'm which helps with, the defense. I'm surprised with trips to the left side, that, and that was a wide side of the field. It didn't take more of advantage of it. Yeah, they, they probably did us a favor. I mean, well, the, any defense you do a favor when you limit yourself to only half the field. Out of the gun. Trying Back to, to the left side, trips to the left, one guy to the right. He's okay. going to roll this way, left steps, throws, looks, he tipped away. Down. Nice play. And the Eagles hold on the first series. That's got to be a momentum booster like you talked about last week. 
tough road trip last week. Tyrone's 5-0. and yeah, they got nothing to lose. They need to come out and just decide they want to play football. They're, I mean, we don't have much speed on offense. So this is going to be smash-mouth offense if they're going to be successful. Jones is going to need to try to complete surprise and quick out passes to Shoal and Coons to keep them off balance. But the offensive line is going to have to decide that they're going to block people this week. Eagles send two guys to the far side of the field. Jones under center. Give the ball off to the first guy. Gains about two. Need to get a couple first downs here to get it out of there. You know, punting the ball in this weather, <laughs> it could be a... Well, on my way in during warm-ups, I was watching uh, the way the receivers were working through their uh, pass things. I'm surprised that more guys didn't have gloves on tonight. A lot of guys still in bare hands. Well, whoops, sorry. Gloves. I formation for the Eagles. One receiver each way. Jones. Going to give it to second back. Is that Struble? I believe so. You're probably going to see a lot of Struble tonight because Hawkenberry, Hawkenberry is still out this week. You might see some Elliot Peters at tailback, which he's not a bad straight-ahead runner. It looked like Struble there, if he would have hit the hole a little harder, probably could have gained a few more yards. Well, he's hobbling as he comes off, favoring that right leg as he runs off the side. Third and seven for the Eagles. That's Let's not see if they play... Uh, go conservative here, try and get some uh, space so they, they can punt. Well, I think we just moved. And here we go shooting ourselves in the foot again. I mean, we do not have a team that can put themselves back five yards on plays like this and then come out and get big play. You know, we're, gonna, we're a pounding ground, two here, three there. So if you take five back, that's not gonna be helpful. So instead of a third and seven, it's now third and 12 for the Eagles. Ball's at the five. They need to get to about the 17-yard line. And that's a generous spot at the 17 if they can get there. Right, and so, with this rain. One guy each way. Jones gives it off to the fullback, and he goes nowhere. I heard, yellow, I yellow heard a fumble ball on the call. Play. There might have been a fumble, which, and they got it. Tyrone gets the ball on a turnover. So, I mean, a simple dive play to the fullback, which you would think is a safe play, turns into a another turnover. Well, the umpire does not have a towel with him out there on the field. That field is saturated. It's not been recorded. So the ball's going to be wet and going to be loose. Oh, yeah. I mean... Any, any type of play today is going to have more danger involved into it. Quick pop up the middle for a touchdown for Tyrone. One play and they score. Yeah, that didn't take long. Was that the fullback or the tailback? I think it was the tailback. They said it was the fullback, Sleeth. Would that be the dynamic duo of Lester Barnhart and Gary Haverly down well, below us? Amazingly enough, Doug, we're doing this for the worldwide world, the World Wide Web. We don't have a spotter. The guys who do the PA do. I don't want to sound all prima donna on you, but I will. Well, hey, Steve, we don't, we can't even get kids to run the camera. You got Helen Keller, me doing the camera and trying to announce. So with the 7:31 at the 7:31 mark of the first quarter, Tyrone has a seven nothing lead. Let's see what the Eagles can do if they can get some better field position on this okay folks before i forget see those light bulbs are out on the scoreboard i need a new scoreboard we need a new scoreboard so if you got some loose change laying around i'm going to be really pushing the pat uh pushing the pedal to the metal here on trying to get some sponsors well uh, doug i have a great idea on how you can raise money tell me Steve. to get a new scoreboard i think you're looking at like a 20-year investment go ahead well no what i'm thinking is you get all of the administrators that are involved in this school. Yeah. Dunk tank. Yeah. I'm just saying. Well. There are some school board members I'm sure that could draw huge dollars <laughs> if they were in there. You're worth a good thousand bucks. Thank you. But if I wore That's a Speedo, if I wore a Speedo, we but, could get another no, two thousand no, no, dollars. No, no, we want people to stay, not run away. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. So here we go. Back to uh, live action. 
Tyrone's going to kick it off. Hey, before I forget, remind me about something I heard today about an idea for senior night. 32-yard line is where the Eagles will take over. That was Jacob Gates. How am I looking, Dylan? Should I zoom in a little more? Or is that all right? Like that. Sorry, folks. That was a, that was a nine yeah, out see, of seven. Is there a way to tighten this? Just because watch Jake when I Leonard. let go it. So Eagles will start their drive at the 31-yard line. Jones Thanks, has buddy. some room to operate now. We do want to thank Dylan Bathers, a.k.a. the Boy Wonder, for being our technical producer tonight. You know, Dylan, we have to give a shout-out to him because, of course, he was the first runner-up of escorts tonight. Yeah, baby. Eagles out of the eye. Who's the female you were escorting? Tyler. Oh, Tyler Yerson, volleyball player. Flag on the play. Big match Tuesday All night, star. before I forget. Against Phillipsburg Osceola. Let's which give will, a date. Which, uh, Not Tuesday. Tuesday. What's Tuesday, the 7th? Yeah, Tuesday, October 7th. It'll be streamed live on Eagle Ambassadors. Thanks to Dylan Bathurst and the Eagle Ambassadors. Another procedure penalty. Somebody's leaving on one count too soon. Uh, and how many is that now? Two already, two. right? Elliot Peters out this way, out of the eye. Jones. Struble back in. Jones kept it. He faked to uh, give it to the fullback on the option. He's going to get about three yards in the play. Struble is back in at tailback. You know, as I mentioned er earlier, though, they can't get negative yardage on penalties or plays, let alone. But we're just not built for what do they call it, uh, past, past the chains or behind the chains yardage. we got to keep it within the 10 yards and shorter, especially on second and third down. Well, this will be key on second down, second and 12, about 13. Jones fakes a pass, fakes so, a handoff. The pass knocked down, incomplete. Dwayne Boone came in on that one and knocked it down. Yeah, the linemen there need to initiate contact so the guys don't have free roam to throw their arms up in the air. But there, Coach Hoover was trying to look like a slant, or was it just a quick it was, out? No, it was a quick slant. Okay. I think we're going to hear Boone's name a lot when it comes to uh, the hardwood season inside the gym. 6'3", 190. Yeah, I think Tyrone, they lost some scoring. With Out of the, the gun. Inside handoff to Struble. Gets away from the first tackler, falls forward to about the 30. And fourth down comes up for the Eagles. You know, you said basketball. Tyrone has had a heck of a run. They graduated their two top scorers, Miller and Grip. So that'll be interesting to see how they rebound. Bald Eagles going to have lots of scoring. <laughs> We're just going to have to see where the defense is going to come from. Fourth down for the Eagles. Ball just behind the original line of scrimmage. Jones back deep to punt. You know, we could do that too for the last home game, try to get the winter coaches up here and interview them preseason. Nice punt by Jones. Drives the Tyrone man back inside the 25, 30, 35, steps to his right, 40, 45, midfield, tap dances along the sidelines. He's going to take over in Bald Eagle area territory. That was a great punt by Jason. The only problem was he outkicked his coverage. Yeah. He had his gunners down there, but nobody filled in the middle. Yep, not not good coverage in the middle part. They they forced him to the sideline, and he still was able to elude a couple guys. What did he do? He catch that about the 35, you said? No, it was inside the 30 to 25. Oh, 25. Now, they marked him out oh, so he, on their side of the 50-yard line. So he, might, he stepped out back a little further than we realized. So Tyro now will send two receivers each way. Darn thing keeps one to tilt. Hand off up the middle, 50, 45, and brought down at about the 43 yard line. That is Sleeth. You know, that was just your basic dive play. You gotta make tackles. No, you know. 
But again, Doug, they were left side that time. They gained yardage. Yep. They found the spot I think they want to exploit, which is the left side. Well, who, who are two right, on the right side for them, who are left end and left tackle for the Eagles? On our, on, for us. So our right? No, they're our left. I'm not sure. It looks like Josh Fies up there. It's hard to figure that out. Sorry, Straight Kim. Straight back to pass. Steps look up, looks, throws it down. He's open if he can get it, but he Ooh. lost it in the I think the, the wind sun. got that, didn't it? There was a quick gust of wind on that one. He laid it up there, but I, the receiver turned around. That's number six, Bakeshi. What's kind of weird, though, the wind came from the baseball right. field, which is not the normal you know, wind current. Now, I'm not a meteorologist. Really? If I was. You slept at a Holiday Inn Express I would, last I would night, have though, a didn't you? But on a rainy night like tonight, there's got to be something with the ponds up there affecting wind flow. Really? Yes. There's a look. And off to the outside, 40, 35. Did he get across the line? Hunter, the ball carrier. So that's a dive play to the tailback. He bounces it outside. I didn't see one blue jersey come anywhere near the line of scrimmage. We're just getting no penetration right now. Well, let's get back to that. Oh, yeah, talk about lake, lake effect winds. Mm -hmm. That water area is bigger than you realize on how it could change some of the stuff coming off the ridge. Oh, that's a good oh, point. There you go. Plus the fog that settles in. Liberal arts in education, the ladies and gentlemen. Like right. homing, college. That's where it's at, baby. Yeah, they sent me a letter today. They want more money, of don't course. they? Hand off to the tailback. He look comes that, to the left side. Oh, nice. there's a nice. It bounces off that. of it. Still it gains, gains two more yards. yards. Sorry. That's okay. We'll just both yell at the same time. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all right. 445 mark before I yelled at you the first time tonight. That's that's pretty <laughs> deep for us. Yes, sir, it is. I'm telling you, doing this camera. You know, for those people who said you can't walk and chew gum at the same time, ha, huh, you're right. using the camera and trying to talk over me at the same time. It's amazing. That's right. So Tyrone has the ball at about the 29-yard line. They're at the near hash mark. Send a man in motion. Long count. Tailback, There's right that side. that counter. 25 and stood up and driven back. It wasn't too badly defensed. I mean, again, we're not getting much penetration, but the linebackers filled better there. Morgan's name's going to be called a lot tonight. And it, for the Eagles, it would be better if Morgan's name's called a lot more than Struble tonight. Yeah, yeah. Adam Morgan's had a nice season. So's, so's Colton Conley. I don't know who's wearing 31 tonight. Do you? No. I'll try to find out. Dylan's two, not out there. We're flying solo. Two receivers to the right side. Look at this uh, gap on the near side. Oh, there's, there's some penetration. They there got you him. go. Who is that? Let me Looks zoom like in. Shuffler. Is that Jarrett? Nice play, Jarrett. Let me go. Let me go find out who's wearing 31, Steve. Shreffler comes up with a big play on defense. Beat what? his man. He had one on one. Shreffler beat his man when I tackled the uh, quarterback. Who's the big man? loss. Third down and 17 oh, okay. for the Golden Steve, Eagles. Steve, there's no there's no 31 being worn tonight because they gave it to the lineman Ben. By the way. So he can't wear it. So it's okay. a you know ceremonial, you know, which is neat because the kids really do like to win that in their career at least once. Trips so, to the left side. Now they send a man in motion. Somebody calling. Oh, penalty flag. Delay Illegal a game. shift. Yep. No delay. Five more yards makes it third and twenty-two. Now it's early, but. Here's a couple mistakes in a row from Tyrone. Right, and think about it. They score a touch. Now, they did drive down the field, but we stop them. Then we give them the ball back inside the five. If not, it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. Trips to the left. They bring a man in motion. Straight back to pass. Steps over the middle. Had it and dropped, dropped it. Dropped it. All right. Zone defense that time, and he hit the he hit the seam with the right pass. Looked like we were in our gold defense, which is uh, too deep coverage. Thanks. Wait to wait to give that out because you don't think any teams coming down the line later will be watching this on the internet. Well, they don't yell it out loud. I mean, um, yeah. so hey, let's face it. Our kids know what plays being run, and sometimes we don't run it right. So I'm not. But sorry, sorry, Steve. 
So we're punt formation. I'm just saying, one of, one of us is the AD, one of us is the homer. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> so anyway, Tyrone's set to punt. Two guys back deep. There's either a score update or I'm screwing something up because I just Left got a text. Left-footed kicker, fair catch called for at the five-yard line. Yeah, there he just broke a cardinal sin of football, which is if it's over your head at the 10-yard line, you let it hit and roll. Right. Inside the 10, let it hit. So the Eagles have 95 yards to go to tie this game up. They have two minutes and 41 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Jones gets a play from the sidelines and brings it in. Try to get a little tighter coverage here. Let's just see if uh, the offensive coordinator calls a little shake-up play here on first down. Well, you know, it's one of those things where I wouldn't blame him if he did. But, of course, look, we're backed up inside our five. There's a pitch to the tailback. Hey, that's Elliot Peters, isn't it? Elliot Peters, he said he's good straight ahead. He ran straight ahead for about two. Positive yardage. Well, if you get two on first down, you get three on second down, third and five is a lot easier to call a play than third and nine or third oh, and yeah. 12. Definitely. Definitely. You know, one first down here would be great, at, at least one, get it outside, you know, outside the 20. They gave Peters two on the run. Out of the eye with the wide receiver each way. Oh, there we go. There's five freebies. Let's hope it was on. Nice now. change in the cadence by Jones to draw off the yeah. defense. Five more yards. I don't know if that was. There we go. That helps. So now it's second and three. The battle of pe center now, count. second and three. I'm throwing the ball. Yeah. Hopefully we can get our initial first down of the evening. Get us out of this backed up offensive series. Jones gets taken down for a loss. Looked yeah, they, like they went to fake the option. Well, here's the thing. Even if that was a dive play, all four defensive linemen were beyond the line of scrimmage. So we didn't block one kid. Whoops, sorry with that camera shake up. You gotta get, you gotta get hats on heads here. Right, you at least get in front of them. 120 left to go, third and six now. That was a loss of two, three. I mean, that was every defensive lineman was inside the line of scrimmage. Now let's see what the Eagles do. Now we've and got Jones us. will take a timeout. Which a little confusion in the backfield. Wisely calls a timeout. Right. Why well, don't want to make a mistake here and give the ball up? Well, and that's what happened on the first series, and that's really the only thing. Right. That, you know, Tyrone has moved the ball a lot, but when it came down to the uh, end zone, they were stopped. Now, you know, on the turnover with seven yards, that's how they got their touchdown. So let's see what happens here. What the coaches are going to call. Yeah, so I mean, we've shot ourselves in the foot with a couple penalties. Could uh, be a lot worse, Doug. It, it could be. Lack of, not lack of, but lack of focus at times on the blocking. And you know, here comes my little spiel from the professional side. Everybody wants to blame the coaches, which, hey, you know me. Sometimes I have a disagreement over philosophy or whatever, but, you know, plays are designed to score, but all 11 is people every, have to do their job. Is every play designed to score a touchdown? Oh, yeah. Every play is designed well, to score a touchdown. Well, unless you're taking a knee or – because even, you know, your fullback dive, quarterback sneak may not be, but it can break for a touchdown. So, in theory, I guess 90% of the plays – and, I, you know, and the kids, I'm sure, don't miss on purpose, but – if you can't block at the line of scrimmage in football, you're not going to be very successful. Third and six for the Eagles. And that's all of them. Jones One guy out can of the gun. Here we go. I'm sorry. Back, steps, looks. Throws the ball. Incomplete. He felt Pass a little intended. pressure there. If he had a little bit more time, Schreffler looked like Scholl. he might have been breaking open on the hash mark. But I don't think he had a lot of time to 
look over things. So fourth down for the Eagles. They did not get that first down that we talked about would help them with the uh, confidence and with field position. Right. So two guys we, back deep for Tyrone. Now we got to hope two Gary Weaver and number seven Silas Crawford. Jones can hit one of his boomers. It's all about coverage this time now. Low snap. Jones has time. Kicks. It's high. It's going to hit. Oh. The coaches up here thought it may have hit the Tyrone player. I don't see a signal from the I officials. Don't, I never saw a beanbag. And the ball is going to be marked out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. Looking through this little screen, I have no idea whether it did or not. But I heard, yeah, the coaches thought it might have. So Tyrone takes over the Eagles' ball eagle, should say, 41-yard line. Here they come. They're going to run the eye. Nope, sink. Shotgun. One back beside him. They'll give it to him. That's Sleeth. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Dances, dances. Gets across the 30 inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. Coming into tonight, Sleeth had 177 yards. Hunter for them. Number 32 had 589 yards. That's not bad, but you consider the Alexander boy last week from Penns Valley had almost 400. Out of the eye, but that's a really deep eye. That's a oh, capital man. eye. There's a handoff. We just said his name. He's going to go. Going. Touchdown. Did he get in? Yes, he is he's in. in. Alex Hunter takes it. Oh, whoa. Wait, we, I heard a whistle. No? It's a touchdown. Oh, okay. Now he got hit when he went into the end zone, so I wonder if there was a flag for no. a late hit. Oh, is there a flag? I, there isn't, but I thought there might I th be. I thought there might be, too. I was hoping it was. Well, you said about the, the, the deep eye. I think that's just to give him more room to well, figure was, out where he wants to well, go. He was, he was at full speed when he hit that hole. Oh, yeah. Ethan Vipon with the extra point. It's good. And it's good. So 14 to nothing, Tyrone out in front with 20 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Whoops. They call that a capital I, I guess, as deep as he is. Yeah, he, so he's running, what, about he, eight yards before oh, he gets the ball? It's eight, it could be 10. I'd like to look at that again and see just how far he is that well, deep. I so thought we're gonna change ends in about 20 seconds. Yeah, I don't know where Dylan got to, but usually he has that one that's on delay, but I guess we don't have that tonight. I was gonna say, you, we, it's usually and, about 50 seconds and, behind. And, and none of you have that either at home. We, we have the luxury of that because we're big time broadcasting professionals. We, hey, have, what special, about that, we have special uh, parking places too. Yeah, what about Carson Spence? Maybe we could get him up here to, I don't you know, know who that, we should get up here. No, I don't. Jen. Uh, no, I, I, I think it's if it's a broadcast club for Bald Eagle, isn't it? No, but she's this? she's good at uh, all I'm saying espousing is, isn't it, her isn't opinion. It, isn't it about the broadcast club of Bald Eagle area? Well, yeah, but right now well, we can't we? get any kids involved. Well, that's why they got to put up with me. Well, I would gladly hand this over to well, someone. <laughs> their kids is a reason, for my sake, to get involved. Right, you want to right, and that's what of we, yeah, that's what we want to do. That ball's gonna hit. It's live, thirty. 35, 38-yard line. Mitchell Struble takes it out there. Good field position for the Eagles to start. Yep. 11 seconds left. So they're they're going to have time for one play on this side of the field. Let's see if they can switch ends. And all the scoring came moving from right to left. Maybe a change of scenery will help uh, the Baldy Galera Eagles yeah. tonight on homecoming. Now, Doug, look at that flag. The, the air has picked up now. The game started. That flag was low. And look we at the direction, though. It's coming Lock Haven, Howard direction. Right. That's not usually a it's good sign. It's blowing east-west. If it's January, I'm worried about a nor'easter at How that point. Yes, that's, that's correct. So here we go. One back for the Eagles. Oh, here he comes out wide, so now i got to zoom it out. It looks like a bubble, Jones? the bubble pattern. Nothing's there. He got caught up behind his own lineman. If he could have got outside his own lineman, he probably could have caught that corner and gained some yards. They Loss of about one, and that'll do it That's for the first quarter. quarter. I'm going to zoom in on the scoreboard. Do, 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 do. Booyah! 
And the one, Tyrone's up 14 to nothing. Looked like they were going for the, uh, uh, what do you call it, bubble bubble route to the back that came in motion. Right, that was Struble. Struble, he was covered. And then when he tried to think, look off, look off of that route, that's when he saw the pressure. So I wouldn't just call it pressure. If you want to look at that again, you'll see that he had orange and white in his face, and so it, was a, it, was, it was a full it was, body. It was not an. It was not a ghost. It was a full body on him. Simultaneous. Yes. And for him to only lose a yard, he's lucky on that one. It was heads up by Jason. So they step it off. Ball's gonna be at the 35-yard line. Bald Eagle grad Jeff Holder's on tonight's crew. Let me see if. Do you see where, I think this might be him right there. Is that, is that, yep, oh, hey. Second and 12 when the, uh, get it ready. Yeah, so we have a busy week now coming, coming up next. Now coming out of, uh, out of a change like that, when does the clock start? When on they blew that double the snap. whistle on the snap. No, no, no. I meant the play clock. Oh, the play clock. Yeah, he would. They would set it, which they haven't yet. Right, right. There's your play clock okay. whistle. So if we had play clocks, which we're going to hopefully have next year, that would have just started. And again, let's talk about the idea. As the Eagles come out in the eye with two to this side, they'll give it to the fullback. He'll get back to the original line of scrimmage, then driven back by a sea of Tyrone Golden Eagles. Calmly gains about three on that play. Makes it third and nine. The rain certainly has. Is it slow kept down? The, uh, yeah, there doesn't look like there's any rain right now, but that's not your typical size Tyrone group. They usually travel pretty well coming up here. Yeah, yeah, I think the rain's kept them away some. And uh, uh, they didn't. Did tip, they bring uh, a band? The, t yes, they did. Okay. Tip of the cap, by the way, to all the escorts who are able to find uh, large umbrellas to walk with the ladies. I'm sure the moms of the ladies were made sure that happened. I'm just Jones saying. goes straight back to pass. Has time. Steps up. Throws oh, it behind. Oh, that one got away from. Him. Who was that? Was that Shoal? Uh, let me. Yes. Now that time. Jonesy had had some time and he hurried himself. So that one there, the line gave him some protection. He just he he hurried himself too much. Shoal was open. Now he was inside the stick, the so it wouldn't have been a was, first down. Was that for Shoal or was that for Schreffler? Because Schreffler was a little beyond Shoal. Just from looking through this mini viewfinder, I thought it was for Shoal, but. Jones. Oh, there's high, a that nice sounded good. high spiral. Fair catch called for and taken. That wasn't a bad punt, it was, was it? It was a nice punt. High into the wind, too. Yeah, that's right. That's true. He's kicking. I mean, here, I'll show the flag to show people how bad the, the wind's blowing. So, I mean, it is probably blowing, what do you think, 20, 25 miles an well, hour? It, it, as soon as we talk about it, it's, there's still a presence to it, and that flag's almost standing straight out again. But for that, to go that high and go that far in that wind, that impressive was, for Jason. Well, you could hear that. You could hear him hit the ball, which and Weaver, you Weaver don't always. Weaver fielded it, and the butt hit the 30. Weaver. I wonder if he's related to Gary or Larry Weaver. They're graduates. Pressure. They're, oh, and he then steps out of it. Look at that, we're just reaching instead of tackling. They're going to get him, but it won't be a sack. It'll be a gain of about a yard. Yeah, yeah I mean, he should have lost yardage there. But anyway, back to the Weaver thing. I'll have to check on that at halftime. My dad graduated with a, another set of twins named Gary and Larry Weavers. And they, it's Gary's boy. Gary, the, so it's Gary's grandson. Okay, so it is a relative of Bald Eagle class of 1964. Sorry, a little alumni knowledge on homecoming. Hey, guess who's back, Steve? Second and 10 for The boy Tyrone. wonder. There's a toss to the outside. He can get to the edge, he will. 35-40, runs out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. Flag down away from the play. Let's see what this is. That could be on Tyrone. Now, it goes from the spot, so it may not be a first down. 
Let's see what we got. I'm zoomed in. Well, now, no, wait. It'd be a first down, but then it would be if they move it back. Well, it'd be first and no, no. It w if it was during the play, oh, it's on us anyway. Well, I guess that's mute. Yeah, forget about it. Or moot. Moot, not mute. Yeah, it looked like illegal use of the hands. So I don't know if someone got up underneath the, you know, face mask. Well, or what? at the end of the play, someone from Tyrone went flying went from being on the ground to getting up and running after one of our players. Oh, that's not so, a good sign. Wait, maybe he signaled the wrong way? I don't know. Let's see what... Let's hope so. Who's he talking to? Two guys are coming over to talk to Ron Hoover about this. What's the deal? Oh, no, he's not. They're stepping it How off. How can you call a push in the back on the defense? All right. Yeah, that, that makes no sense. I... That's an interesting call. I mean, unless it's just, then I think they signal wrong. If they're saying it was something flagrant, it should have been a personal foul or unsportsmanlike conduct. Right. I don't see how a defensive play. Regardless, right. Sleeth, 40, spins down at about the 34-yard line. So, again, run into the defensive left, offensive left, defensive right for big yardage. So Sleeth came in tonight with 177 yards. He's got a lot more than that so far tonight. And Hunter had 589 before he came in, and he's got to be close to 50 yards at least. So, uh, I will try to remember this week to get us some halftime stats and really mean it this time. Out of the eye, first down for Tyrone, ball at the ball to Eagle, 35. Steps, slant, nice play on the outside. Who was that tackle? Pass complete. Struble. To Crawford. Struble on the tackle. Struble on the tackle. Gain of about seven. Does that look good, Dill? Tyrone breaks the huddle. A little bit of speed. Hunter so pulls out signals. Sorry, broken eye. They give it to the fullback. He's going to be close. Tailback, excuse me. Well, you know what? They went to the defensive left side, and that's where we've had better success of stopping those plays. Short by about a yard. So what down is it? Third. Third, third and one. Now they're on the near hash. Let's see if they call a play this time to go away from the strength of the defense for the Eagles. Go the other way. It would be with the wide side of the field. Right, and if they roll, he's going to be running against his body. Now shotgun, it's easier to get out there instead of having to pull back from center. And a timeout's going to be called by Tyrone. A little bit of confusion that time, and the coach ran out on the field to call that timeout. Well. Like I said, if they roll out here, if they put them in shotgun, that makes it a little easier for them. Well, they of broke the pull. huddle. It looked like they were going to come out in a shotgun with a sidecar and two each way. But you got to—you would think with that speed that Hunter has, you got to capitalize that with a wide side of the field. And let's go back to the touchdown where he was 10 yards deep taking that ball, and he's getting it on a, on a full run. Well, or even trying to run him, even try to run him on a uh, bubbles or uh, flare route or circle route. Well, fortunately for both teams, it is I'm not. I'm getting yelled at. I'm not allowed to tighten anything. Fortunately for right. tonight, the rain has subsided, at least for now. OK. Getting yelled at. So they've called a different penalty. Can't take the they've called a different play, excuse me. So the they won't go shotgun. Quarterback sneak, he'll get the first down. And when they stop his momentum, he'll be at about the 21 yard line. See, now there I thought we might get called for something because we had a player kind of just dive into the pile, knocking people down. And that's where you kind of sometimes see a silly personal foul penalty. Five gets credit for that tackle. First down, balls at the 22 yard line. I'm tired of getting yelled at, Steve. There's so many directions to go with that, Doug. I know. Two tight ends, one back for Tyrone. Long count. Ball. Ball's loose. Now, they didn't signal penalty on that. 
and of course we can't get it. See, and we, second we, down. We got to make we got to make some things happen. There's a perfect time where we could have recovered a fumble, even though it looked like they jumped. Like this, yeah. It looked like the center didn't snap the ball when everybody thought it was going to be snapped. I don't know how that wasn't a penalty, but we'll take it. Well, we get we get the down and they lose a yard. So Dylan, what'd you bring for halftime food? I'm hungry. So they go back to the gun with three to the wide side of the field. Sleeth is a sidecar, and they still have a tight end. Hunter steps back, steps up. He's going to be pulled down. Somebody lost a helmet, and he's going to be bent over. Schreffler in on that, and was it Fi who was in there with him? Uh, somebody lost a helmet. What is the rule on that? The play yeah, is supposed yes, yes, to yes. stop immediately, correct? Mm, I, I don't know about that, but he has to come off for a play. But a nice defensive surge that time. Schreffler coming off the edge. See, now here's... They lined Schreffler up off of a tackle that time. They didn't have the help of the tight end. See, look at the way Schreffler's. Now he's going to be standing up as a rusher as they come out of the gun. Let's see if he can beat his guy again. Swim move by Schreffler. Beats his man. Steps up. There's a pass. It's complete. Comes across the far side of the field. Look at that stiff, stiff arm. arm. I think he got the first down. He's going to be short. I'll tell you what, though. That I mean, they had that defense. You had two guys there, and the first guy just come flying in, totally got broken down while well, he just dove. I mean, we had someone in there that should have made the play. It shouldn't even be fourth and one. Well, the the thing that gets me is when do they call a face mask on the offense for a stiff arm? Well, that's a good thing. I mean, you see that in the college and pro level, too, and it's not called enough. Or fourth even and one. hand to the face. You know what I mean? Tight formation. We need someone to get some penetration. There it there looks it like they jumped a little soon, but Sleeth will fall forward and get the first down for Tyrone. So you thought they jumped? I thought I thought the right side of their line moved before the ball was snapped. See, now I'm sure there was a reason, but we didn't have our biggest lineman in to try to block, you know, stuff that a little. Now Fi's in the game. Well, I, know I guess that's one of the things we'll have to ask Ron in the uh, post-game press conference. Yeah. Well, and again, I know they try to cycle kids in and out to get them a break. The timing of that one there wasn't probably the best. First and goal now for Tyrone. I'm sure it wasn't planned that Two way. Two receivers to the near side. Sleeth is a sidecar. Sleeth's going to get the ball. He's going to go left. Right there. He gets out of two tackles. Slides outside. He's going to be still standing and still moving inside the five-yard line. These Tyrone runners are not falling down on first, second, or in some cases, third contact. Well, you can't expect a good athlete to fall down when you just dive at them and but don't it's wrap not, them it, but up. But it's not, uh, let's go beyond that. It's not just a question of it's not two-hand touch. Clearly the Eagles are not playing two-hand touch, but it's the tenacity of the Tyrone oh, right, runners right, that, that's right, doing that. Right. That's, that's well-schooled. Right. Now they're on the far side of the field to go that tight formation again with three backs. Hunter's going to give it to Hunter. Hunter. In for the touchdown. Yes, he is in for the touchdown. Guy on the near side waited to make that call, and the Golden Eagles are out in front 20 to nothing. 4.55 left to go. Yeah, you can only ask your defense to do so much. They've got Bald Eagles going to have to start generating some offense somehow. Well, the, the other thing you have to remember, Doug, a lot of these linemen, they're playing both ways. Oh, yeah. They have not come off the field whatsoever. Snaps low. Kick is up. Kick is good. 21-0. Golden Eagles out in front of the home team tonight, 21 to nothing. And a little uh, little mixing it up in between as the uh, Zebras get in between the Eagles and the Golden Eagles there. Dodgers Cardinals tied 1-1. Penns Valley takes lead over P.O. 14-7. So for the Eagles there, here tonight, they go on the, the road, road, the road next, next week. Where are they play next week, Doug? Ty or Huntington. Well, how much time's left on the clock? How much time's left? 4.55. Sorry, I'm just giving an update to the... Multitasking. Yes, giving an update to the district or the Mountain League. You know, when I was a reporting. kid, there was this show on Saturdays that CBS did called You Are There, and it was about historical... Uh, 
times and they and they do reenactments of them. Right. And for people who are going to watch this on the Eagle Ambassadors YouTube page, big thank you by the way to the Eagle Ambassadors for Here providing we go. this. Here's a slam coming on. People are going to watch this game in 4 or 5 years and they're going to go, "Who's playing whom?" And they'll say who's playing whom because they went to a good school and got a quality education and they'll know that you can't say who's playing who. And they'll wonder what game you're talking about, Doug? And that's the fascinating thing about what makes this World Wide Web so exciting about posterity. So in other words, you don't want me to give live that's updates. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's, like you, it's like you were there. Struble, 20, 25, 30. 35, gets out to about the 38-yard line. Nice return for Mitchell Stuber. The problem is Mitchell is having too much practice returning kickoffs tonight. Right, right. And when your guy has more yards on return, then he has rushing the ball. Usually it means you're down 21 to nothing. Right. Correct. So 62 yards to go for the Eagles. A big score here before half would really help out in the locker room. Well, think about it. They haven't scored at least in the last nine quarters. They've been shut out two games, the first quarter. And when did we last score against Penns Valley? So they need, they need some success. One back for the Eagles. Jones, he'll give it to the fullback. 40, 45, There's spins a nice forward. Run. Nice run and a first down for the Eagles. That, that was a really nice run by Chum Comley. Balls at the 49 yard line. I believe, Doug, that is the Eagles' first first down of the night. Yes, with 4.41 to go in the second quarter, the Eagles get their first first down. But the kids blocked well. I've been critical, so I got to give them credit. The guard and center on that side and on that play did a great job of quick hit. They'll stay in that formation. Calmly's going to get it again. Midfield falls forward to about the 48-yard line. Gain of three. You know what? And I think that was the same play opposite side because Ron Ron Hoover probably thought, let's try it again. I mean, sometimes. As we say, there's sometimes way too much thinking going on. Sometimes it's run it till they stop it. Do you think we'll see a third straight time? I'm going to say we are. I think they will go play action this time. They got single coverage up on top. Nope, they will give it to Comley. 45 inside the 45, down to about the 42-yard line. Yeah. He's close. It'll depend on right foot, left foot to see if it's third down or, like or first down. Looks like third down. It's going to be third and about a yard. Yep, third and about a yard, looking at this. Who's over there on the stick? Is that Craig Rogers? Yes, it is. Okay, we're zooming back. 3.27 left to go here. You got to think this is four down territory. Oh, it had, yeah. Unless, yeah. Unless they would get a penalty and go Same back. Same formation. If they run it. Jones for the keeper. Oh. He's going to fall forward. I think they're going to give him to the 40, and if he does, that'll yeah, be a first down. This, the... Rep, the lines judge here at this end is singling first down, so. The ball be placed at about the 40 and a half yard line, but it was enough for a first down and two first downs in a row for the Eagles. Clock continues to run, but that's okay. They're, well, and the, not, this, is, this is the first sustained drive of the night, and they're, right. not, they're not blown out yet. It's 21 to nothing. They score right. here, it's two scores. They get the ball to start the second half. Well, and the thing is, I, you know, calmly. Now, Forty. Their linebacker blitzed and just held it enough. Got to about the, the 38 yard line. Got about two. And the yeah. wind, the wind's blowing towards us now, Doug. It has shifted around. Flag standing still, but where where we're at in the booth, you can feel wind. We're, we're getting we're getting uh, the wind. Well, they, they blitzed the right inside linebacker that time, and he just held things up enough where I think, was that Conley again? He yes, to, it is. He had to bounce it outside a little bit more than I think he wanted to. Well, you don't really expect your fullback to bounce him outside. No, but. Here we go. Conley. Uh -oh, Jones, uh -oh, he's got uh -oh. pressure. He's got to step up. It looks nice pass just behind Schreffler on that yeah, play. That time, yeah, he needed to lead nice him a little bit. Nice play call. But Jones was running for his life on that one. Yeah. That would have been a huge loss for the Eagles had he been stopped on that one. Yeah. And that was Hunter for Tyrone on the, the tailback. Was that who had the pressure That's coming from the That's who had the, the pressure coming off the edge. 
Yeah, it was a timeout call out. by Ron Hoover. Yeah, they have one left. second one of the uh, half. So 2.13 that, left to go. That was a good play call. Um, Jones threw it a little bit behind Schreffler, and I'm, I'm asking more than saying. Right. Could he still have caught it, though? Like, was it that far behind? Like, I, I can't see through the viewfinder. Well, the problem is, I think, because this turf's going to stay wet because you don't have – Zamboni. Um, so when you're when you're adjust the way he adjusted, I think his feet went Just out from under him at the him. same time. Had he been able to keep his feet, I think he'd been able, been able to move it more. So as he's probably turning his body, his yes. feet goes out from right. underneath him. Okay, yeah, because again, I'm trying to do a better job with the camera this week, so I'm getting closer. Am I doing better? Yeah, there'll be a cookie for you at halftime. We only, Third, have, we only have one more home game left now. The question is, <laughs> senior night on third and, on third and eight. Do you try and get all eight on this, or do you call two plays? I don't so think you go so. Fourth down? I think we go. You, I mean, I think we need to get at least half here. Well, interesting. They're not using a fullback this time. They're going to use a speed back that looks like it is Struble. Who's who's the who's the going to go who's the tight end at this end? Because if I was thinking here, go backside tight end on a pop pass. I can't tell. Is that Coons? Yeah, so look for the backside pop pass. Jones. Nope. Steps looks. Oh, oh my. man, did he get hammered. Yeah, 33 Sleeth just. Sleeth came out of nowhere. He came, actually jumped over the top of the line to get him. And now it's fourth down and about 13. And yeah, that was or only, 14. what, a three step drop, and he was on him. So uh, the blitzing linebacker didn't get picked up. They looked like they were they looking to the inside guy, I think. Well, I. Th Look, looking at it again, I think you're going to see that with only one back in the backfield, who does he take? Because they blitz two. And and Sleeth came over the top. Is he running the clock down here to call a timeout? I think yes, he is. How much time's left on the 127. clock? 127. Yeah, so that might be like, hey, look, if we're going to go for this, let's try to run as much clock as we can off so we don't give him the ball back. But you know, my thing is. Do you maybe punt it here and just try to make them have to go? What do they have, two timeouts left? They have two left. Now, let's not forget, on that last punt, it came very close to hitting the up man. Right, so in some ways, a punt here could could be a good but yardage the wind, gain. The wind is picked up again, though. Yeah, and that's true. Out. Right, it could, it could be one of those punts that goes up and just hits a wall and goes backwards. Well... As long as it only stays windy, it won't be that bad for the players. But if we get more rain like we had before the game and the wind, you know, we're going to lose our gate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Although you, you already got their money coming in. So That's right, baby. Hey, what are you going to do? Yeah. So. So. You know, tonight, it'll of course, will be the night that I that I hit the 50-50. Yes. Because there's. I bet you half, it's not as the, bad as you thought. The crowd. There was only half of the normal crowd here. Was it two years ago at Tyrone that there was just a monsoon down there, or was that three it years was ago? It was, well, we were at Huntington. One in Huntington. Oh, so we are punting. Punt. See, I thought that High. was. High. Nobody's in the middle of the field. Oh, it's gonna. Oh, it, oh, it hit the guy. I thought it hit off the heel of that Tyrone player. Well, they're not singling. There is so, no sing. And our kids button. aren't acting like no. they want it. You know, me, meaning, so it must not have. But, you know, it must have been close. To, you sounded like the coaches up here. It hit well, the Tyrone guy. You, know. you, Homer. Is that your friend Fisher? What is the Eagle Ambassadors? I know. Uh, I'm just. Web page. Yes, I know. But it's I was, not like the Swiss family uh, neutral web page so Tyrone takes over they got a minute and 14 seconds left Hunter back screen, screen. screen. Over oh through. they had people downfield blocking ahead of the pass and no penalty call well yeah and I think I think it's like three yards they have they can be downfield on that so that had to be close that was to, that was five yards down oh the there's field a flag or it should be Dave Jones former future PIAA official now that's what it looked like, too. We've been called for that I, enough this you year. Know, I, I think Dave Jones won't be a PIAA referee for a very long time. He's going to have sons playing football for the next 15 years. Well, that's, yes, that is true. Well, you know what? Speaking of PIAA officials, my son was supposed to take his basketball test on Monday and never applied. So Out of the gun. 
They Sorry. rush four. Nice penetration. Oh, right down oh, the middle. Seam. Oh, sleep. Oh, see, that's Gets why. by two men. He's going to be tackled. And that's not sleep. That's number 13. That's Getz. Getz. And Getz gets about 45 yards on that play. First down for Tyrone. Threw it right down the middle of the zone. Well, I don't know if we were in a two deep zone that time or not. Were we two deep? We were three deep. We were in a cover three that time. And they broke the cardinal rule. Never let anybody deeper than you. Out of the gun. They're going to run the same play. Watch. He rolls oh, no, to his left, steps, has time, throws it in the short. He just did us run. a favor by. Yards but, but after we, catch yep. is huge. Make well, sure you get those uh, results, by the way. He's close to a first down. Well, he did us a favor by coming back inside to the field, but we didn't keep him no, inside no. the sticks. No, meaning he didn't do it. No, he didn't do us a favor. High school, the clock's going to stop till they reset the No, chains. but I'm saying if we could have tackled him before the first down. Well, sure. Now, they already reset it, though. That was a quick start of the clock. Then you get quicker than you usually get. That ball flew about 55 yards to gain maybe a yard. There's a flag down, and is Tyrone finally going to be called for a penalty? It's got to be a hold. Or did we hit the quarterback? No, they're, they're waving him back. Holding. It is holding oh, okay. on Tyrone. You got to take him back. You got to. 27 with the, seconds left to go. Even though, what, did he gain a yard? I, I, You still got to take him backwards. He threw from the far hash across the field to outside the numbers. Yeah, and look, the flag's totally still right now. There's a, well, miss, totally there's a miss coming off uh, out there under the lights. As soon as I said that, it started moving, but I swear it wasn't moving when I made the original. Sure, call. sure. Where's our, like, delay picture? I, I'm not get, You know what, Dylan? I'm tired of you yelling at me. Clock running, 35-yard line. Hunter steps back, steps forward. He's right down the seam for a touchdown. Alex Hunter gets that one from 35 yards out, and that one hurts. Oh, that hurts big time. And that's the same same route they've been running, just down the seam. They have speed on the outside. So Vipon on for the extra point. Yeah, well, since it's, it's an extra point, that's why I zoomed out so they left. can see the ball. If they, Well, it's hopefully. Down. It's up. It's good. And so. with 14 seconds left to go in the half, the Golden Eagles of Tyrone are up 28 to nothing. Eagles have 14 seconds left. Struble's been close a couple times. Who knows? Maybe he gets his opportunity here to break one and put a little fire back on this side of the field. All the noise is coming from across the way with the Tyrone fans right now. Now I got people criticizing my. Um, oh man, I'm getting texts. They're saying wrap up. We're not wrapping up on the tackles. That's that is true. And then I got a. Can you fix the camera, please? What's wrong with the camera? You know, this is your outside voice, not your inside. Voice. Well, I'm yelling at them. What's wrong with the camera? Maybe they should come up and run the camera. Just saying. Wow. I understand why you wear a couple layers of clothing now because your skin's so thin. It's Friday. It is Friday. It's been a long week. Struble's deep. Let's see if he gets one high to return. I'm thinking they might just scrub it and be safe. All right, what do I know? They're going to kick it over Struble's head, make sure it gets into the end zone, and does. So it's a touchback. It's a touchback, and the Eagles will take it at their 20-yard line with 14 seconds left. Now, do you run a play here, or do you do a kneel down and get off the field? A kneel down. What, you well, don't I haven't seen the three guys to our left uh, heading down the steps yet, so I think maybe they call it a play. Well, I just yeah, you don't want anything to go wrong. With that being said, they just left. So Thanks. I'm thinking. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there'll be tax on your chairs when you come back. So Eagles I, break the huddle yeah. in the eye. Because even running a dive play here can be dangerous. Jones takes two steps back, goes down to a knee. 
And it first. looks like both teams are content to let the first half run out. Four seconds left, the last play of the half. And on homecoming, 2014 at half, Tyrone leads 28 to nothing over the home team, Baldy Galera Eagles. So now our band's playing at halftime. So you want me to turn this off for right now, the recording? I'm, we're going to mute our mics right now, yes.
And getting ready to start the second half of homecoming 2014. Uh, light mist, not really a steady rain, more of a light steady mist, I guess is the best way to say it. I know when I when I made the trip down at halftime, uh, you got a little wet, you weren't soaked. But it's just a miserable night. Thank God it's not cold as well. Yeah, the wind is just enough where it does make it feel a little damp. And now you can see the rain sort of in sheets across the way. Yes, I think it's I think it is starting to pick up. I don't know what the delay is right now, but um, well the Eagles will get the ball to start the second half. They need to do something. I don't know what it is. That that I'm could sure. be let's mark this as probably the best color commentary ever <laughs> given in any football game oh, they need to do smacker. something have you thought about running for politics somewhere in your life because that could get you elected they need to do something the sad thing is in our world today you're right i probably could get elected just on that you comment. can't afford me though dylan's dylan's <laughs> leaving there's the ball. It's going to skip and go it's a live ball at the five oh, Stribble didn't pick it up he thought it was going to go out He's going to be stopped at about the six-yard line. That wet turf and the way that ball spun kept it in instead of having it roll out of bounds, and the Eagles will be pinned deep in their own ends, end of the field to start the second half. You know, sometimes, Steve, when they say it's best not to say anything, keep going. I'm not saying okay. anything. So let's see what the Eagles have to do <laughs> after halftime, what uh, Coach Hoover and the rest of the staff said to the players. But you're right. They need to turn some positives here. Right. Game is not completely out of hand yet, out of their reach. But they need to put together a few, a few first downs in a row, get a score to really give things off. Hand off to Struble. Struble's going to get stopped shy of the 10. Now, I'm looking through the viewfinder there. But is it me or he ran into his blocker instead of hitting the hole? Well, there was a lot of 
pressure from the defense. In the middle? Okay. And again, that's why I'm saying I'm trying to give, watch. They're only getting him credit for a yard. I thought he got further than that, but he got stood up pretty quick. Now they'll send three out to the near side of the field. The Eagles are on the far hash mark. Single back. Jones gives it to Struble. Struble will get across the 10 and out to about the 11-yard line. Bring up about a third and eight. I know what they're trying to do in, in theory here is spread them out to try to create some angles and stuff. The problem is last year you would have put fear into the other team because of your speed. Right now, they're almost half half moving wider. Like, we better slide someone out, but they're not sliding out as wide as you would think. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, so, it's, it's a long third down. They'll send uh, receivers each way, two to this side, one to the far side, one back. Now, if Jones has time and he's going to take a three-step drop, get the ball out, and they're not going to get back to the line of scrimmage, they'll lose on the Yeah, they try to Shane bubble Coons. screen. And, and it'll be fourth down and about seven. They're going to lose a yard on that play. Yeah. They threw a bubble screen, and one guy came in unblocked, which... I think when the, uh, the coaching staff goes back and, and looks over this, they're going to see that with time, Schreffler's been able to be open on that post pattern down, the, down in the flat. The problem is Jones doesn't have time to, to read, make his reads, and get the ball out to somebody. No, he's got to step back and let it go whether the person's open or not. End over end kick, let's see if it hits and rolls. It's gonna hit and bounce sideways and it'll be stopped at the 43 yard line of the Eagles. Yeah. 32 yard punt for Jones. And Tyrone takes over with 9.47 left to go. Now the question will be, Doug, at 28 to nothing, how long does the first team for the Golden Eagles stay into this in this ball game? You would think the third quarter and then see what happens from there from there. Right, I would yeah. After that then you might see, you know, a touchdown extra point here puts the mercy rule in effect again. Hunter hands off to Hunter, who's gonna get across the forty, inside the forty and down to about the Eagle 38-yard line. Gain of about five, second and five on the play. That time it was a handoff. Didn't really utilize his speed with a pitch to the outside. Uh, simple, right, off, right, off, right off tackle. Yeah, simple dive play. And again, you, it's funny. You watch it through the viewfinder like I'm doing. You said gain of five. I'm thinking it's a lot more. But how many yards is he back right now, Steve? From the, He's what? He's eight. Eight yards They're Give it to him again. 35, but 30, then, stays on his feet and slips forward to about the 22. Who tripped him up deep? Was that Coons that tripped him up? I, he might have been the one that made contact with him. He at least made him adjust his stride, which he might have tripped himself. But Elliot Peters got credit for that. Well, that's good. He works it's in the that, It's convenient that his dad's a spotter. Well, and he, and he works. No, his dad's not the spotter. It's Gary Heverly this year. Oh, but he is? does work in the athletic office. Well, so go. it's still good that, you know, Dylan gets credit for tackles, and he's up here helping us. So there's a toss outside. Look at that. Nice play on defense. Stayed with it. That's Elliot, Elliot Peters, Peters again. again. Yeah. Another Malzberg boy. Yeah. No gain. Maybe a half of a yard. That time they used Hunter's speed to try and get to the outside. Peter slid out with him and stayed with him, made a nice tackle. Clock did, continues to run. Six and a half left to go. Hard to believe six and a half has already gone by here. Has it really been that yep. much already? Unless it's an eight. Well, that's why we got to get an LED scoreboard because those bulbs are starting to go. They get wet. Oh, 30. Sleeth up the middle. He's going to rumble across the 20 and be down at about the 17-yard uh, line. Third and five. So big third down here. Tyrone. Now on a dry night, I wonder if they'd let Vipon kick one here and try it out if they don't make it on fourth down. But you got to think with, with the weather conditions and the way that line's pushing the uh, ball to area defense back, you're in uh, four down territory here. Yeah, I'd agree. Even though, you know what, sometimes the best way to practice some of this is in live, you know, not trying, you know, saying the game's over, but look, over the middle pass, pass wide, wide open. open. Touchdown. Jacob Macdad, the tight end. 
great play action call, wide open for the touchdown. It's 34 to nothing, Tyrone. Yeah, that, that's the nice pop, so, pop pass to the tight end on the back side. And that's because of your play action, your dive plays. Well, the, the kids just went for that hook, line, and sinker, man. Well, they've been, they've been running the ball, running the ball, running the ball. Then they go back to call it a play action. The extra point is good, and it is 35 to nothing in favor of Tyrone. Well, like back to what you were saying about whether they would kick a field goal or not. I mean, if I was coach, and say you and I were back in business, this might sometimes the best time to practice things is in the heat of the battle with younger kids even, you know what I mean? So Well, on a night like this. In the playoffs, you might have a night like that's, this. That's what I'm saying. As we get further into October and even into November, you know, let's face it, Tyrone's undefeated. They're up 35 to nothing now. My, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say they're probably going to win this game as well. Right. Um, you know, 6-0. and oh, Their standing within the uh, the league is, is solid. They're ranked in the state, and they're moving up each week because of these wins. But like you said, you got you got to practice – there's, there's a system about this. I ran into uh, a couple of guys who work for the State College Spikes this week at an event. The New York we, Penn League champion. We New York, New York Penn League uh, champions. And I said that, and we were talking about the difference between when this, when the Pirates had the team, and when the Cardinals had the team. And one of the things I thought was the Pirate organization viewed it more as an instructional league, so they're worried about pitches and hits and everything like that. The Cardinals seem to have wanted to teach that team how to win games. Yeah, and you're right. It's a different philosophy. Right now it serves both programs. Struble takes the kickoff. 20, tries to step outside, get to the edge, 25, and pulled across to the 26-yard line. I don't think his knee ever went down. Oh, even on the tackle, you mean? Yeah, I think he was on top of the defender. I don't think his knee ever went down. Sometimes I see that in games, and you wonder about wonder about things. Hey, when you get a chance on your phone, check the Louisville. Now, Bears. now on one of those occasions when that happens, how quick are we able to upload to Bridgeport, uh, Connecticut, and get that to ESPN when that happens, Dylan? Yeah, actually, we could be watching that, but I have the women's volleyball on my phone right now. Penn State's up one nothing on Nebraska women's college. And again, volleyball. a moment in time. Eagles will start at their well, 26. Reagan Dyke's probably at home watching it right now. So Out of the eye. Jones, three-step drop. Throws to the outside. Pass is complete. Now, that's a seven-yard play. Scholl looked around to see which way he was going to make that cut. I think he should have came towards the I, middle. I thought if he'd have cut inside, he had a better chance of breaking it off for more to get the first down. Right. Gets but it was a good seven, though. Wait, right, it was a good throw, good hands catch by Scholl. He got his hands up. It was yeah. a nice three-step pot, you know, timing pattern. That time, Jason had time, took the three-step drop. And the line did a nice job of blocking. Again, I've been critical of them, so I need to be positive when they do it. Handoff, Elliot Peters spins, oh, gets across. The first down line is going to be stopped at the yeah. 40, and that's going to be a first down for Ball to Galeria. Yep. Yep, that was that was a nice nice blocking play. He kept his he kept his feet going and gained some extra yardage on his own. Initial contact that time did not get him down. He he spun out of that first tackle and kept going for a first down. Now Jones looks for the call. Checks the wristband. So I haven't heard from the Thomas and Spence clan. Are they not out tonight probably because of the rain? I have people that are monitoring the broadcast. Oh, do you? So far, it's are we doing okay. okay? I'm sure you're killing it, and I'm just hanging they on. Are. Here's Inside. that bubble screen. Coons tried to step away from his tackler. He did not have a blocker out in front, and Coons was. Yeah, I, th I think he we was whiffed. a victim. He was a victim of that. Yeah, I think we whiffed on the block. See, well, the, but the thing, the thing there is, when we talked about that with Tyrone on that last time when they ran that screen in the first half, they had guys downfield, and they blocked ahead of time and that should have been called, that time, that's one of those things where how far off the line of scrimmage you're allowed to make that block. Wow, and I just, I don't even, I don't like that play. There's so much more that can go wrong, even in like at the collegiate level. I mean, because in theory, especially if it's man to man, if you take one of the guys to catch the ball, his man's now free. So, in, who, you know, someone's going unblocked. Jones so out I, of the gun. He steps, screen set up, throws it to Schreffler. Schreffler. They're going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. No one on the line made a block once they let that initial set of guys through the line. Right, and we just, heard the coaching staff 
on the sidelines yelling their frustration up here because no one's putting a block on anybody. No, they, they literally, remember what we would have done in basketball, we would have sent them out to pay admission because they're standing around watching. So third and about 15, clock running, 4.41 left to go in the third quarter. I mean, that wasn't a bad idea. Let them come through and, and throw the, the problem was is that he still had to try to find the receiver among all those blockers. Jones out of the gun, has time, steps, throws. Pass is complete, now dropped, and they'll call it an incomplete pass. That was uh, Scholl. Incomplete, it would have been short of the first down. I think he took off before he had had the ball in his in his. It was grasp. there. It was a good. It was a good play. It was catchable. He did every. The quarterback did everything he was supposed to. That one was on the receiver who looked to turn up field before he had possession of the right. ball. Again, the effort was there by both of them. You just, you just see that a lot of times where they're turning before they've secured the ball. So Jones back deep to punt. Nice high kick. Kick fielded at the 30, 45 midfield. Whoops. Steps up, 40, 35. Jones gets Jones laid out. Last guy back and they're gonna run it back for a touchdown. No flags on the play. And that is number seven Crawford who took that ball back for a Tyrone touchdown and now it is 41 to nothing in favor of Tyrone. Yep. What can you say? I mean, if punt was a nice punt, we should have had coverage downfield. He made two nice moves, cut it, cut it back across the grain. That's the thing that they've done all night. They're, they're crossing against the grain and taking that momentum of the Eagles and going the other way with it. And for some reason, they're not slipping on this wet surface. Kick's good, it's 42 to nothing in favor of Tyrone. Yeah, so. And on a rainy night for homecoming, some of the faithful have started to head for their vehicles. Well, again, sometimes, you know, sometimes you're just beaten by a better team, Steve. So yes, now you might start seeing some new players in the game, at least for Tyrone. Both teams play on Monday in JV action at Tyrone, six o'clock. I was trying to see if Crawford had any stats on return yards, but uh, he just has receiving yards so far. On the, sh on the stat sheet. sheet. Yeah. So. So the Eagles are down 42 to nothing. Struble is back deep again. There's a bit of a mist and a bit of a wind, but yeah, all the air is pretty much left Alumni Stadium tonight. Yeah, yes. Those that are sticking around are probably parents and... Sorry, I'm, not, I'm gonna keep it back here, so. That one's gonna hit and get into the end zone and the Eagles will take over at the 20. So, so the Eagles go on the road next week and come back here in two weeks for senior night. Who will they host that night, Doug? Oh, Clearfield. Clearfield. It doesn't get easier. Clearfield has another nice team. I think they have, what, one loss? I don't think Clearfield and Tyrone have met yet. Clearfield has a loss to Central, which was their first loss in like 30 games in the Mountain League, and it was at Clearfield, so that was a big win for Central. We'll also be honoring at halftime the 2014 AA softball runner-up team, you know, introducing the girls coaches to the crowd. Let them have a, some recognition for their fine season last year. Here's a toss to Struble. 20, 25, 30, he's got a hole, 40. Slows up to try and beat the tackler instead of outrunning him. And he'll get across midfield. A nice run and on the stop, Anthony Grassi on the tackle for Tyrone. That might be one of their biggest plays of the entire year. 
Yardage. Well, he broke he broke containment and, and went wide with the ball. And well, th he got Lyman out in front of him, and they made some nice blocks. You know, I mean, and it, I think they're still going against their first team defense. Struble again, across the 45 and down to about the 44 yard line, gain of about four. I mean, they're teenagers. A little bit of positive positive stuff could go a long way. Were they stuck together there, or was he just helping them? No, he was just uh, helping them. A little bit of sportsmanship there, yeah. fixing the pads and the shirt. Well, that's nice to see. I didn't know. You know, if they... Doug, I was gonna uh, when I was preparing for my wardrobe tonight. Yes. Uh, I got a By special way, package. I got a special package in the mail today from the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh. My Devin Still jersey arrived, and then I remember we were hosting Tyrone. Oh, incomplete pass for Shul. Um, I didn't think it was right to be wearing a black and orange jersey here tonight on homecoming. Well, some people might have not known the situation and would have been probably surprised at, at least. But, of course, you can let the, you know our listeners know what you're referring to as far as Devin Still. Well, Devin some Still people is, uh, is a Penn, was a Penn State standout, drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals. His daughter has uh, cancer. She's four years old and is uh, going through treatment. The Bengals a team that's been called the Bungles by the Steeler faithful for years. Kept anymore, still baby. on as Jones goes back to pass. Looks, he has time, rolls out, pumps, cannot break containment. He's going to be tackled for a loss. That was Sleeth on the tackle. So the Bengals, which are owned by the Brown family that have been owned by since Paul Brown started the team, they kept Devin still on the practice squad so that he had money and he had insurance to cover the cost of his daughter being treated for pediatric cancer. Then they decided, the story broke, and they decided to start selling his jersey on the website. And now all of the money that goes for the Devin still jersey goes to fight pediatric cancer. And Sean Payton of the New Orleans Saints bought a hundred jerseys. I was say it was yeah, yeah. They he Steve was Miller like, only bought one. Yeah, he but he, Sean Payton gets a lot of credit for getting the story out nationally, in a lot of ways. Punk is out of bounds. So for he's the not on the active roster. It, actually, they they put he him isn't. on the active last week. Okay, I I thought I'd heard something like that, but they upgraded him. Now his daughter uh, is finished with I think this latest round of treatments or had a surgery this week. But uh, it's an interesting story and it's a positive story about an organization in a cutthroat business like the National Football League investing in, in not just a player, but in, a, in an entire family. Well, and with all the bad publicity they've been getting, and even though I'm not a Penn State fan, he was a good, very good player for he Penn State. He was a great State, defensive and the fans lineman, would, yeah. yeah. So I think he's been, uh, he's been with the, the Bengals four years, I think. Yeah, I remember them talking when they were on, what's that, Hard Knocks? Yes. That might have been his rookie A couple years year. ago. Sorry, I'm moving the camera too much again. Rain's really starting to come down now. Tonight would have been a great night for a uh, soup festival, uh, bread bowl and soup. Is that the end of the third quarter, I believe? Third quarter comes to a close. 42 Tyrone, Baldy Galeria, nothing as the rain begins to pick up just a little bit more on homecoming 2014. 12 minutes left to go, and with the 42 to nothing score, Doug, do we have a continuous clock now? Oh, yes. Yes, we do. And, of course, the Eagles had some momentum here and then tried a pass play, which, you know, can't blame them for trying. Uh, Jones got ran out of bounds, so now they're facing, what is it, a third and – no, no, it, oh. you, you need, we, turn, oh, we, we just punted. punted. Yeah. yeah, oh my okay. gosh, sorry. We get it's okay. We got, I, we got. One of us is in the game still. Well, we get talking about stuff. I'm sorry. Sorry, Dad. Remember how I paid you that credit about, you know, chewing gum and walking at the same time you're able to talk and do the camera? Yeah. Okay, we need to pull that yeah, back sorry. a little bit. That was first quarter. That's all right. So, Penn State's off tomorrow. What do you what do you have planned for your Saturday, Steve? Well, um, it's a pretty personal question, oh, sorry, Doug, but uh, I think there might be some laundry and uh, some house cleaning. I'll be here and, for junior high volleyball action. Really? We're hosting our late crossover. They bring in all the when I say the A teams, you right. know the the older group. Really, and, Dirk Benedict will be here and uh, Mr. T. You Dirk? said the A team. Oh, good call. Thank Thanks. you, Steve. That was, Thanks. He'll be, he should, New he'll be quarterback in for Tyrone. Oh, wait. 
this guy's name's Hunter also. So I think you're going to probably see a lot of vanilla dive plays. Out of the eye, up the middle, no gain. Weaver stopped on the play, loss on the play of three. Yeah, Defensive I think stand. Now, is this, uh, since it's junior high, is this a, a league thing that it's a league mixer kind of thing? Yeah, where, what it is is high? to cut down travel. Like, we don't play, who don't, we don't play Holidaysburg, Altoona, um, some others during the quote school week and then they do this to to get them one place and play multiple events there's a pitch to the outside so it, it really is a cost saver for the schools and there'll be another loss on the play back to the 20 yard line so we're hosting because we have the nice gym big gym down there where it you is can an outstanding facility now the one thing though about holidaysburg and altoona when you're talking the big city more options for meals after the game. Correct, but yeah. if you think about it, um, we we offered to host a because okay. you know it's a good fundraiser for the girls in their uh, concession stand, as you well know from running the boys basketball booster club and concession stand. The more events you can hold, the more money. Um, Third down for Tyrone, and they will not get the first down. Eagles hold them three and out. And this will be the second pun of the night for so now Tyrone. The, but the girls are a little mad at me because they have to work the concession since they're not playing the older girls instead sure. of their parents. And, of course, I can't win. I scheduled the older girls second thinking they'd want to sleep in. But, oh, no, as my daughter informed me, she would rather work in the morning so she have the rest of the day. So, anyway. Interesting. Yes, you know. Well, you we, know could, we could spend the next uh, 9.55 discussing why women in your life are always angry with you, Doug. <laughs> And I'm sure we would have more hits than ever before. Yeah, now the text on, on any of the, the events. text messages will start rolling in from probably Danielle Butterworth, who wants me fired from what I hear. This could be my last appearance. So I calling don't know. out her husband was oh, up here. Almost and blocked. Left left footed kicker. And uh, they're gonna get a nice roll. Ball's gonna be picked up. Is that uh Struble? It is. He's gonna get it to the 40, 42 yard line. Mitchell Never backing down, picked that one up on the bounce and took off with it. No, I thought when when the uh, the outside edge came with that, I thought he had a chance at a block, and then the punter kicks it and he's left footed, and he gets that good English on the on the ball and it rolls on a nice bounce. I'm telling you, there's something about that because we have a young Kresovich girl that Joey Kresovich and uh, Terry Kresovich's daughter Megan on the JV and varsity volleyball team. She's the only left-hander, and her serve, not that it's not good on its own, but for whatever reason, just seeing it come off a left-handed arm, it makes it even more effective. So. Well, and I think that's one of the things, a timeout called by the Eagles, so we'll stop the clock. We can talk about that, Doug, about one of the things that was always difficult for receivers in, in, in football you have a left-handed quarterback versus a right-handed quarterback. The spiral is the, the opposite way, which means the ball is going to travel the same way, but it's with the way the spin is on the ball. Same thing with the left-hander golfer. Yep. You know, Baseball. speaking of left-handers, how about that Tom Watson, Phil Mickelson love fest uh, after the, the Ryder Cup? Cup. Yeah. A lot you of know, discussion about that. I was in an event yesterday, and there was a lot of talk about that. And, um, you know, you know, people were like, well, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like Phil Mickelson. I happen to like Phil Mickelson. I I'm like Phil him, Mickelson but fan. I think he's wrong on this one. I disagree. He talked about you need to go back to the Azinger 2008. When was the last time the U.S. won the Ryder Cup? Well, that, that uh, that's true, but look at the line. I mean, we could debate this for a oh, while. Oh, oh. And how about he needs to play a little better? Wait a minute. I'm just saying, Hold look at here. his record. Look at his record. He was 4-1 and one this weekend. I don't think so. I think when you're he wrong. play in groups, he and his he and his partner are four and one in groups, and he played thirty six on Friday. They didn't they didn't play him at all Saturday. Come oh, on, no, no, that there were some things, but yeah. yes. Anyway, maybe it's time for Tom Watson to go back to running for Congress in Iowa or whatever. Hand oh, off up the middle, fullback calmly. He's going to be close to a first down. I think he's going to get it. Was that calmly or Morgan? Calmly. Eighteen. It's Colton calmly. So yeah, the first team offense in for Bald Eagles still. Probably against some of the backups from time. I'm just asking. I well, can't tell. The, well, but, you know, I mean, 
you got to keep fresh legs in. That's one thing you talked about. Is it Morgan? Is it calmly? You know, Coach Hoover runs them in and out enough to keep them fresh. Right. Well, and to be honest with you, probably our offense needs to score. I mean, meaning just to feel good about themselves. So that's probably why you still see some of the starters in. Shoal to the far side of the field. In motion goes Coons. Shuffler oh. jumps. Oh, wait, it's high school. We're not allowed to say who jumped. Yes. Sorry. Yes. But the guy, I know you didn't but the guy nearest to us with the shoes that are easiest to describe. So calmly comes off. Loss of five, second and 15. I like just go straight ahead on this and run the ball. Right. They'll stay in the eye. Schulz go to the far side. In motion goes Coons. Oh, Jones got hammered. He tried to make the pitch. After he got wrapped up, he got hit again by by the second guy in. 748 left to go. Seven thirty-five left to go. Clock running. Second down and second down and seventeen. One each way. Out of the eye. Hey, you know that phone has a thing called airplane mode. Yeah, I know. But okay. It was one of my There's coaches. I had to check in see how he's doing. Back to the line of scrimmage brings up third down and seventeen. Peters, back to the line, third and long for the Eagles. Second half, they finally brought out a towel. I might be. I should probably try to swore, watch it on that screen. Oh, no, you don't need to do that. that Dylan's going to take care of me. Very cool, by the way, the, uh, the rain gear that the cheerleaders have utilized. You mean the clear? Peters goes through? out. Or is it over? Wide open. Nice pass. 20-15. Hold on to the ball inside the 10-yard line. Nice pass. Shane Coons. There was that tight end post play and a nice job on it. I believe your color commentator has called for that play all night. Nice long pass play. What? Zoom out. What do you want? What are you talking to? Go ahead. You so can. Eagles, you already. The ball be inside the ten, so it'll be first and goal for the Eagles. What's he trying to tell me? Do you get what he's trying to tell me? I'm tired of you guys You're making fun of me. Just say it. I, I wasn't making fun of you, Doug. I was trying to talk to my producer over your shoulder. Oh, I'm sorry. Out of the eye. Full back up the middle. Calmly. Five. Inside the five to about the four yard line. Second and goal from the four. Well, here we are, Doug. You talked about the need for the team to score, and we're four yards away from it. That time, Jones had time, was able to look over the field, do all of his reads, not his first or second. Sometimes he's only had a chance to do one read all night. Right. It's step, step back, set up and fire, even if it's not really supposed to be a set up and fire play. Out of the eye with two to the far side of the field. They'll give it to Comley. Comley's going to run forward, get to about the one and a half yard line, short of the goal line. But we're in four down territory here. You know, if here's that perfect time for this to happen. You're on the far side of the field. You send your two receivers out to this side of the field. Right now, you have Jason Jones do a naked bootleg. Fake that handoff and get run around the far end. If it works, you're brilliant. If it doesn't, you, you lose you still, yardage. But you still have another down yet to do this on. Yeah, see, I'd go off tackle to my left. Quick pass. Out the flat. Touchdown. Scholl with the score. And the Bald Eagle Area Eagles have scored at a the touchdown. 45 mark are on the board. 42 to 6. And they'll bring Ishler in for the extra point. Well, we play point. Huntington next week. Huntington struggled. I mean, 
it's a game next week that if they come out and play well, play hard, work together, it's a winnable football game. So you build baby steps, you know what I'm saying? Switch to some uh, personnel here for the extra point. Because then for the rest of the season, you have Clearfield right. and Jersey Shore the two weeks after that, both returning triple A champions in their respective districts who played last year against each other and would have played here if we hadn't already winterized our bathrooms and concession stands, but that's a whole other subject, which it wasn't anybody's fault. We didn't realize we were even cons being considered for playoffs. Um, well, we have this right. fantastic facility. I think you should wait till the last... Um, yeah, but here's the thing. Wait till the very last minute before you do it. Yeah, you yeah. Take the kids that are in trouble with your in-school suspensions. Apparently, the food cannon has gone off on us. No ketchup? Hey, what are you complaining for? It's free. What There's no ketchup. That's what I'm complaining about. You want anything? No. You want? If I start to eat, I'll mute it, everybody, so, the Eagles, so I don't get yelled at. 42 to 6. Onside kick time. Oh wait, I'd ask you, but you're chewing. Okay. No, th no, you're still on there, so that counts. By the way, if you would like to uh, donate money to the Eagle Ambassadors, it's www.beaambassadors.org. All donations are tax deductible, and, and. If you uh, donate the right amount of money, there's a good chance we could drop Doug Dyke from all future broadcasts. So there's an incentive to get your checks out and donate. So, Isher, there's, a, a, <laughs> there's no way you're going to be with me in basketball season. That ball's going to hit and roll into the end zone. I already have my color guy. Brett Butterworth. Well, uh... Folks, let me put this pledge out to you right now. Let me send this plea out to you right now. I cannot work with him in the winter, okay? I've gone through some hard things in my life, but working with this guy in the wintertime as well, I just can't, folks. So, young people of Baldy Galeria, interested in a broadcasting profession, and it's a lot of fun, and you get to go do a lot of things, and I've had memories in my life of being a professional broadcaster. Really, it's hard to believe working with Doug, I actually have professional background in broadcasting. Get involved. Keep Doug down with the referees. That's where he likes to be anyway. Okay, let's back to live action. Tyrone takes over at their 20-yard line. Handoff, off tackle, 25. 27, and he'll fall across the 30 for a first down. 4.28 left to go. What's going on? Those girls are throwing things up here. What's going on, Doug? They they obviously know it's you. Oh, wait, the cheerleaders are throwing footballs and T-shirts. And you have to think, if they're throwing T-shirts that have been out this long, they're, they're heavy now and weapons. The rain is steady. With a light breeze, a few wet but clean uh, jerseys have uh, stepped in, handoff up the middle, 30, 35, 40, gang tackled at okay, the 45-yard line. Okay, I'm done eating hamburgers, Steve. Well, Doug, on behalf of those viewing, there's a hot dog right here for you too, buddy. <laughs> I'll eat that after the game, smacker. I think, 3 you know, 38 left to go. If you come up with more than... $2,000 in donations to Eagle Ambassadors on behalf of keeping Doug Dyke off the air. I'll consider not doing basketball. Well, folks, the Pennsylvania Lottery Mega Millions game goes <laughs> off at 11. You still have your tick chance for an hour. Oh, they're stopping the game so everybody can go buy their Mega Millions tickets. You have an hour yet to buy your Mega Millions tickets. Let's have that telethon. Let's have that pledgeathon. Let's raise the money to get Doug off yes. the YouTube. What the do you think, Dylan? The Doug Dyke you, off you, the air telethon. You have, can you start recycling cans that we can start Andy picking Buha's up Andy getting in his wallet right now. He's making the first donation. I think here's momentum. This is the kind of excitement we're raising we need money because Miller wants to get me off the air. I'm so sure Karen if they is raise two thousand right dollars, I won't do basketball very excited games. About the idea of raising funds <laughs> and just driving him into the lake down in Howard. That would be Doug Dyke, of course. 
Dave Jones would reach so, for his wallet, but Jeunesse has it. 316 oh, left zinger. to go. 42 to 6, Tyrone out in front. <laughs> Eagles did score in their last uh, series. Oh, I'm telling you. Uh, Dylan, I want you to just, I'm going to ask you yes or no questions. I want you to nod or, or, or shake your head. You're in the band. What's this weather got to do for those instruments tonight? It can't be good for the drum heads and, and, the, and the other stuff, right? So now will all the band people that have actually, to go and dry everything afterwards? Seriously. Will there be hair dryers involved or just towels? Okay, I said it was yes or no, but that was a sort of a loaded <laughs> question. First down for Tyro. Nice stop on the play Ooh. at the line of scrimmage. A little extracurricular down the field, too. Why not? You know what? Let's get a little chipping. Yeah, yeah Stephen. You know. Well, well back to that question. Hold on, back to that question. It's homecoming night. You gotta, you gotta show it off for the girls. That yeah, I knocked a guy down. All right. What do you think? Back to the question about the band stuff, though. But like, so on a night like this, it's very difficult. Well, I, I have a question. Out of you, the, you have to drain out the horns, like put them upside down or whatever, make sure all the water well, runs out. A spit, there's a spit valve in those. No, dogs. but I mean like. To like air Hand dry. Off, up the middle, 45, uh -oh. 40, 40, down to the 35 yard line, rumbling ahead. Okay. Number 21. So, like Brian the Xyla, Taylor. the bell dingy thingies. It'd be the xylophone. Xylophone. There you go. Are you. they okay. wooden? She, okay. And will Mrs. Long oversee all of that cleaning up of that stuff? Are you kidding? She's she got really so is. many lackeys, it's not even funny. That's why she has a lot of kids, that they can do a lot of work. Or, well, that's, I'm sure she'll make her kids in the – but, I mean, just – I mean, I signed so many sheets for kids to work in the band room. She's got a bigger workforce than PennDOT, I think. <laughs> Hand off up the middle. No whistle yet. That was a slow-developing whistle. I think the referees have already decided we got a player down for the Eagles. Uh oh. And it's not good. There's a lot of pain there. Yeah, he's kicking and I'm not making No, yes. no, he really is. I don't get a num I don't have a number on that one. Well and I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna move it off anyway. And the rain has picked up. Yeah, well, I just not keeping it on the injured player. And of course the rain is really like really picking up. Well I, I think the mic's probably picking up the noise on the top of the uh, the roof here. Central's only up 12-7 on Chestnut Ridge in the fourth quarter. Well, but Doug, you cannot look at tonight as a typical night of football with this weather. Oh, this it, is it's, it, it's a it's a, uh, it's you a know, neutralizer. It does neutralizer. It, it takes the speed off. Okay, who's up and and coming off the field here? Oh, that's I mean, when I say good, at least he's walking off. He's off on his own power. Since he looks good, we will. Who is it? Four. Is that Mikey Katchik? Is that Corey Thompson? Is that number four? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Yep, you're right. Well, that's good. Good that he's walking off. It looks like he might have some upper body, as they say in the, the NHL. He's holding that arm. It could be a shoulder. Upper or an body elbow. injury. You know, the NHL starts soon. Getting us any Penguins tickets? Uh, well, you know, it is October. And of course, when in October, everyone's mind thinks, of course, of hockey. Um, I think if, if I were Gary Bettman and I ran the NHL, when start till December? I would start in January and just play Every through April and then let the playoffs start. This, It's too long. It's like NASCAR and golf. It goes too long. Hey, speaking of football, I saw some signings this week in the Arena Football League. Any word I, on? I cannot speculate nor discuss anything about that. About the Pittsburgh power? I will not discuss there or or discuss it whatsoever. 125 left to go. Kneel down for Tyrone. Come on. On second down. That's eight. Hey, you I know. I really don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, you don't? I'm not familiar with the organization. Arena football, man. It's where it's at. Well, if you really want to know, <laughs> I would recommend a show on AMC Network called Fourth and Loud, and it follows the season, the first season of the LA Kiss. Kiss. Owned by. I, uh, are you going to let me tell? Them, I'm or sorry. Are you jump I'm just going to say, owned by. You know, they're owned by Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons from the band Kiss. And they, it follows the trials and tribulations of a brand new team starting in LA. And uh, not to, you know, not to say anything, but I was actually on the show. Were you really? Because I, I may have been at a. Would you do a, photo bomb? No, no, or? no, no. I was at. They showed <laughs> highlights of the game between the Power and the Kiss, and I was 
down in the end zone at my normal where perch. we where we stand. You were not there. Well, uh, no, I only get daughter, to go to one game a year. My daughter and I were there. Actually, the ownership has asked you never come back, <laughs> much like the uh, the people here at Bald Eagle. Wow. So wow. 19 seconds left. Time for one more play, and the Eagles will. Are they calling the game now? Oh, they're running no, it they, down. They, they're just running it down. Okay. So that'll do it. Tyrone comes in and spoils homecoming for Bald Eagle area tonight. They'll leave with a victory 42 to 6 for Doug Dyke and Dylan Bathurst. I'm Steve Miller. Thank you for watching. Don't forget www.beaambassadors.org. Thank you for watching, everybody, and good night.